Hi guys, I'm John and welcome to my channel. In today's spray paint art tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make different texture with the same material. So the material I'm going to be using for this tutorial is some magazine paper. This is just from a TV guide. I'm also going to be using Montana Gold spray paint. I'm going to be using Valerie, Cherry Blossom, Pink Pink, Ultramarine, Blue Magic, Bermuda, Shock White Pure, Shock White Black, and I'm also going to be using some clear coat. This is used to wet the paint back up. I'll also be using some lid stencils. These are just plastic lids off food tubs. So the first type of texture I'm going to be showing you is the one that everyone uses the most. And that is just get your magazine paper and just screw it up like that. So you've got some lines in it, some crinkles to make your texture on your planet or in your painting. So first we'll put some paint down. So I'll start with Valerie. Then some cherry blossom over it. You want to add a few colours to your planet or when you're doing texture. So it gives you a bit of a variant of colour in it. And then what we'll do is add some highlight and shadows to it. So with the black we'll put a bit of shadow on it, that side. And then some white this side. So like I said, the first one is the one where I crunch it up like this. So what you want to do is just place it over your wet paint. And just give it a rub. And what we're going to do for this one, we'll just get a, your three fingers and just give it a light rub. Like that. And we'll peel it off. And then that produces the texture. So you get a nice texture there, like that. So you've still got a bit of a black and a bit of a white we put over. And as you can see, the variance of colours. So we go from Valerie to Cherry Blossom to Pink Pink. So always use the darkest colour on the shadowed area, on the dark side of the planet. So now we'll just add some highlights and shadows to this. So like I said, the dark side's here. So we'll just add a bit of black. And a bit of white on the highlighted area. So that's the first texture done. So we'll move on to the next one. And the next one is, we'll just get a magazine paper and we're just going to fold it like that. So you get a bit of crinkle in it. Then just squeeze it a bit. And then you get lines going that way. So for this one I'm going to use Ultramarine first. A bit of ultramarine first, and then blue magic, and then Bermuda, and then a bit of black on the dark side, and a bit of white. Like I said, this is one I've crunched up to produce lines. So put it over, and I'm just going to rub it. With the back of our hand like that, lightly, and then peel it off. And as you can see, it gives you a bit of a different texture than this one. So now back to the black. Shadowed area. And then the highlighted area. As you can see the same one here, the variance of colour as we go from the dark side to the light side. The blues get lighter and lighter. I think they look a lot better on your planet than just putting one block colour on and then another colour on top. Gives you a bit of variance in colour doing it this way. So the next type of texture we're going to do is get your magazine paper and we're going to fold it in half and then in half again. So you have something like this. I'm going to put that one here, so I think for this one I'll go a bit of ultramarine, a bit of cherry blossom for this. And let's have a bit of pink on it. 
and some black and some white and then for this one we'll get the folded piece of magazine paper and all we're going to do for this one is turn it on the wet paint so we'll get it and then we're just going to turn it to mix the paint up Like that, and I, I think that gives a real nice effect there. And the paint and the colours mix up really nice. I really like this effect, this texture on planets. So now we'll get the black and do the shadowed area. And then with a white highlight. Now we'll move on to the next one. So what we're going to do for this one is... We'll get it, and we're going to fold it like that. And we can go again, so it's... So you get the magazine paper like this, so you fold it a few times. And then for this one, I'm going to get a bit of Valerie. A bit of blue magic. A bit of Bermuda, a bit of black, and a bit of white. So for this one, the folded paper, we're going to get it, and we're just going to push it across the paint, pull it towards you, just to mix the paint up. Sometimes the paper moves, glossy paper. The way you're spraying on, so just put a bit of weight on it, and all we'll do is just pull it towards you. And if you want, you could do it again, you could go that way, and you still got a bit of paint on this paper, so you could just start again, add a bit of purple and that. Just keep doing it so it mixes up, so it gives you some colours. So I like how that texture is. So the cans only pull on there to stop the paper moving. So you can pull the paper to make the sliding texture. So now we'll get the black, the shadowed area. And some white. For the highlight. So with that one done, we'll move on to the next one. And for this one, we're going to fold the paper again in half. We'll fold it in half, like that. Then we'll fold it in half again. And what we're going to do now is, we're going to do some folds from this corner to that corner. So you get it. And you want to go like that. And just keep folding it to make some texture and press down so you get the lines and then what we'll do is we'll open it back up and you should have some lines on this now Few, a different texture on your planet so I'll open it up as you can see you get a different type of pattern on it so for this one I think I'm just going to do two block colours to show you so I think I'll have some cherry blossom And some blue magic. Then some black. And some white. Now we'll get the paper we just folded. And we'll place it over it. Then we'll give it a light rub. And hopefully we'll get some of this texture. 
from the lines. So when it gives you this type of texture, I quite like that texture on there. As you can see, the cherry blossoms come in from beneath the blue, which I really like. We'll get the black shadowed area and then the white for the highlighted area and then for the last one it's pretty much the same as the first one we did but we'll just get it up crunch it up a lot to a small ball so you get loads of lines on it so you get loads of lines like that on it and I'll put this one here so I've got a bit of blue magic. I haven't got much room on this sheet now. Bit of cherry blossom. Bit of pink. A bit of Bermuda. And then for this one, we'll just push it on and then we'll just push it down with our palm. Like that, no rubbing on this one, just push it down and then we'll peel it back off. And it gives you a texture like that, just by pushing it on. That's a quite nice texture as well, you can see like loads of different colours in that, because the more colours you add, the more colours will be on your planet. So a bit of black, and a bit of white, so I'm pretty close to these other planets, these other textures now, so I've just got to watch out. In fact, because I'm a bit too close, I'm just going to put some of there, stop any overspray. So that's the highlights and shadows done. So that's some different textures that you can make with magazine paper. So I'm going to place the lid stencils on each of these so you can see what the texture looks like after I've sprayed all the background black. But ideally you want this paint to be dry before you add the lid stencils on. Because if you don't let the paint dry and you put your lid stencil on, when you pull your lid stencil off later on, there'll be a ring around your planet where the, where the lid stencil sat in your wet paint. So always let your paint dry before placing the lid stencil on. This way you'll get neater planets and you won't get the rings around your planets. That you would do if you put the lid stencils on when the paint is wet. So as you can see here there's a bit of overspray on this one. From office when I did the highlighted area. So I'm just going to get a black. I'm just going to put a bit of black back on it. So like I said you want these to be dry before moving on to the next stage. So you can speed up the drying time on this so you don't have to wait for it to naturally dry. You could use an air dryer or a heat gun or something like that just to warm the paint up so it dries a bit faster. So I'm going to dry the paint up faster and I'm going to be using a heat gun. So for this all I do is put it on the setting and then I hold it about a foot away from the painting and just move it around where the wet paint is. Don't hold it in one spot else the paint will start to burn and bubble. So just keep moving around until the paint's dry. Might take about 30 seconds or so. Always keep the heat gun moving. And if you're using glossy paper or some kind of paper, don't get the paper too warm because it starts to lift up around the edges as the paper starts warming so you can always stop and let it cool down for a minute or so and then go back with, with the hot air dryer or the heat gun or something like that like I said in previous tutorials that I've done just take your time and let each stage dry before moving on to the next this way you'll get better results so I'll just let that cool down now so we'll get the heat gun again And we'll go around. 
for the first few planets that we've done will already be dry because we moved on so like this one we did first that one will be dry enough to put a lid stencil on it's these later ones that I did they'll be a bit wetter and also the more paint you put down the longer it'll take to dry So I'll just give this one a bit of a blast because that's got a bit of thick paint on it. And then what you can do to see if it's dry, you can just get your fingers and just lightly touch the paint to see if it's dry. See, them three are almost dry. That's almost dry. That's still a bit tacky. And that's still a bit tacky because I put the black paint still over it. So what I normally do is just keep doing that until the paint's dry. Could take you a couple of times to do it. Just don't blast the heat in one spot else it'll start to bubble. So most of these are dry enough now like these three. This one's still a bit tacky but I'm going to put the lid stencils on. So if it does leave a ring on any of the planets when I take the lid stencils off later on you can see what I'm on about. So these are pretty much all the same size lid stencils. So the first one we'll put on, you want to get a bit of a shadowed area in the highlighted area underneath your lid stencil. So we'll put that one there. We'll have that one there. We'll have this one here. That one there. I'll have that one there, and then the last one. I'll have there. So there are the lid stencils on each of the textures now. And what you could do is you could put a, some weight on each of these lid stencils to hold them in place. But if you are going to use weights on them, you have to make sure the paint's completely dry. Because when putting these weights on these lid stencils, it'll put more weight on the lid. So you'll push the lid stencil deeper into the paint. So always make sure that the paint's dry before placing the lid stencils on if you're going to use these weights. So I'm just going to put one weight on each of these. These are just old drawer handles. Just to hold the lid stencils in place. And also it stops any black spray paint going underneath when you're doing the background. So we'll move on to the background and with the black... We'll just spray around the lid stencils first, lightly. So I'm also using skinny caps on these cans as well, which lets a lot, lot less paint out than it would if I was using a fat cap or something like that which I like using a skinny cap because it makes it means that you'll use less paint when you're filling in the background and that you only really want it just to be black just a light coat of black so you're covering all the paper up you don't want to flood it with the black because when you start putting your background colors in for your background if the wet if the black paints too thick or you put too much on but the colours that you're going to put on top will just seep into the black paint. Especially your stars, when you flick them on or do your stars in the background, they'll just sink into the black paint. The black paint will overpower them if there's too much black paint down. So the thing I'll do for the black, it's mostly covered. So the thing what I'll do is I'll just put a bit of colour into the back. Nothing special, just a few bits of background colours here, here and there. Just a bit of pinks and the blues. So we'll use them all like Valerie, Ultramarines. We'll have a bit of blue magic in places. And a bit of pink, pink. 
So Caps is spitting a bit here. If that doesn't matter, it can give you some colourful stars as well while you're spraying the paint on. So a bit of light blue in places as well. A bit of cherry blossom. And if you do put too much paint on, on your background, too much colour or they're too powerful, you can always go back with a black and just go around in places, just lightly spray it, take a bit of a colour out. It's up to you how you do your background. Right, now the last thing we're going to do is get the white paint and we're just going to make some stars. So for this we'll just spray some on our fingers here and flick them onto the sheet. Right, so what you want to do first is get some white paint on your finger like this then flick most of it away from the painting like that and then flick the rest onto the painting this way you won't get big white blobs on your painting that don't look like stars so flick it away and then flick the rest on so if you do leave a paint on like that just a big blob of paint like that and you flick it on See, you get a big white patch of white dots there. They don't really look like stars. So always flick a bit off first before you flick them on. So that'll do for the stars. Just a quick background. So you can see how the textures look on each of the planets. So what we'll do is take the lid stencils off first. The weight off these lid stencils. And then we'll start with this first one we did, the first one. So as you can see, I really like that. A different texture on it. Now we'll move on to this one. I like the texture on that one as well. Now this one. I really like the texture on that one. I really like the mixture of colours. I reckon it looks awesome there. So we'll move on to this one. That's also nice. I really like that. The sliding one. Slide the colours together. I really like how that's looking. That one where we just pressed it on. I really like that. The mixture of colours. I really like the colours in this one. And the last one. This one was a bit wetter. And I really like how that one's turned out as well. So there are all the lid stencils of each of the textures. So the last thing I'm going to do is give it a clear coat. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this helps wet the paint back up if the paint's too dry when you go and do your texture. Or it can also be used to seal the painting at the end. So what you want to do is get your clear comb. We're just going to go from side to side. So just spray it from side to side as we move up the sheet. There's not much in this can so it's spitting a bit. As you can see, it also brings the colours back out as well. Makes them pop a bit more. There's not much in the can with this. It's taking a while to do this clear coat. As you can see, as I'm putting it over the paint, brings the colours out. And it also gives a nice glossy finish to the painting. Because the Montana Gold is a semi-gloss paint. But you can get different types of clear coat. You can get matte clear coat. So if you want your final piece, your final painting to be a matte finish, you can spray a matte clear coat on. You can also get semi-gloss clear coat or you can get gloss clear coat the one I'm using so now we've given it a clear coat the last thing I'm going to do is just sign it so for this I'm just going to use a pally knife I'm just going to sign it here 
So as you can see, by using the same material but folding it in different ways, you can make some awesome texture on your planet. You can also use these different methods for making texture on different things. I think each one gives a unique texture and some of them are really nice, really awesome looking. So let me know in the comments which texture you like the best and which ones you're going to use in your spray paint art. I hope you enjoyed watching this how to make different texture with the same material tutorial. And if so, don't forget to give the video a like and please share it. And if you're a new visitor to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. It'd be very much appreciated. And once again, thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope to see you all in the next spray paint art video. Have a great day. Take care and bye for now.